This video will show you how to conduct a three-point test cross. A three-point test cross is a cross between a triple heterozygote and a triple homozygous recessive individual. A three-point test cross can be used to map three linked genes and establish the order of the genes in a single set of progeny. Double crossovers can usually be detected, providing for more accurate map distances. To understand how to calculate the map distance between linked genes, let's first examine a two-gene case. Let's say we have genes A and B on a chromosome, and we have the following data. The recombinant offspring due to crossing over will be significantly less than the normal offspring. In this case, we see that progeny that have both wild-type alleles on one chromosome and both mutant alleles on the other chromosome occur in greater numbers than progeny that have one wild-type allele and one mutant allele on both chromosomes. This indicates that the parental non-recombinant configuration is cis, or coupling. So, the recombinant offspring are those with phenotypes big A, little b, and little a, big b. If we take the total recombinant offspring, add them up, and divide that number by the total offspring, and then multiply that by 100%, we see that we have 23% recombinants, which is also the distance between genes A and B in map units. So, there are 23 map units between those two genes. Now we'll go over a three-point cross example involving cis coupling. Waxy endosperm, shrunken endosperm, and yellow seedlings are encoded by three recessive genes in corn that are linked on chromosome 5. A corn plant homozygous for all three recessive alleles is crossed with a plant homozygous for all the dominant alleles. The resulting F1 are then crossed with a plant homozygous for the recessive alleles in a three-point test cross. The progeny of the test cross are shown below. To determine gene order, the first step is to identify which progeny are the non-recombinants. They will be the two most numerous classes of progeny. From the example, we can see that 3 and 4 are the non-recombinants because they are greater in number than the other progeny. Next, we will identify the double crossover progeny. These progenies should always have the two least numerous phenotypes. Well, we can see that 1 and 2 are the double crossover progeny. These numbers also confirm that the configuration of this test cross is coupling or cis configuration, meaning that an individual with a non-recombinant phenotype has mutant alleles for all loci on one chromosome and wild-type alleles on the other chromosome. The opposite of this is repulsion or transconfiguration, in which each chromosome would have a combination of mutant and wild-type alleles. Now to determine relative distances among the three loci, we must identify all crossing over events in the other progeny phenotypes. We already know what the parental and double recombinant configurations are. Three orders of genes are possible. WX, SHV, SH, WXV, and WXV, SH. To determine which gene is in the middle, we can draw the chromosome of the heterozygous parent with all three possible gene orders and then see if a double crossover produces the combination of genes observed in the double crossover progeny. In the double crossover, the two outer alleles are the same as in the non-recombinants, but the middle allele is different. The middle allele should differ from alleles present in the non-recombinant progeny. We have already established that the heterozygous parent had cis configuration, meaning that on one chromosome, you have all dominant alleles and on the chromosome and on the other chromosome, you have recessive alleles. To determine which gene is in the middle, we have to look for the allele that is recessive when the others are dominant, and the gene that is dominant when the other two are recessive. In our double crossover one, we can see that B is dominant and the other alleles are recessive. The two outer alleles, SH and WX, are the same as in the non-recombinant progeny, but B is different. In double crossover two, we can also see that B is recessive and the other alleles are dominant. The two outer alleles, SH and WX, are the same in non-recombinant progeny, but V is different. Based on this, we can conclude that gene B is in the middle. After determining V is in the middle, we can rewrite the gene order of all progeny and make sure we put V in the middle. Next, we have to determine which progeny underwent a single crossover. Two underwent single crossovers between SH and B and the other two underwent single crossovers between W, X, and B. 5, 6, 7, and 8 are the progeny that underwent single crossover events. We can compare the alleles found in these progeny with those found in the non-recombinants. To find out which progeny had a single crossover event between W, X, and B, 
we can look at the progeny where the WX allele is different from the other alleles when it is compared with the non-recombinant progeny. Looking at progeny 8, we can see that WX is dominant when V and SH are recessive. This shows that there was a single crossover event between WX and V. Likewise, looking at progeny 7, we can see that WX is recessive when V and SH are dominant. This shows that there was a single crossover event between WX and V. To find out which progeny had a single crossover event between SH and V, we look at the progeny where the SH allele is different from the other alleles when it is compared with the non-recombinant progeny. Looking at progeny 6, we can see that SH is dominant when V and WX are recessive. This shows that there was a single crossover event between SH and V. Looking at progeny 7, we can see that SH is recessive and V and WX are dominant. This shows that there was a single crossover event between SH and V. We have now determined our gene order. WX, V, SH, or SH, V, WX, because the gene order can be read in either direction. Now we need to calculate the map distances between the genes. We can determine the map distances, which are based on the frequencies of recombination in the progeny. To determine the map distances accurately, we must include all crossovers, both double and single, that take place between two genes. There are a total of 10,756 progeny, so the recombination frequency between SH and V will be the sum of progeny that had a single crossover event at SH and V and the progeny with double crossover events divided by the total progeny multiplied by 100. The recombination frequency between WX and V will be the sum of the progeny that had a single crossover event at WX and V and the progeny with double crossover events divided by the total progeny multiplied by 100. The map distances between SH and V is 30 mu, and the map distance between WX and V is 7 mu. In our second example, we'll be looking at transconfiguration. A line of Drosophila have been generated with three recessive mutations, V, W, and Z. An F1 heterozygote is crossed with a fly that is homozygous recessive for all loci, and we observe the following data where a plus indicates a wild type phenotype. Because the progenies that occur in greatest numbers have phenotypes that are not exclusively wild type nor exclusively mutated, we know that the parental configuration in the heterozygous parent was transconfiguration. From this information, we also know that the parental non-recombinant phenotypes a recessive V, a dominant W, and a dominant Z, and a dominant V, recessive W, and recessive Z, and that the double crossover phenotypes which occur in the smallest progeny numbers are recessive V, dominant W, and recessive Z, and dominant V, recessive W, and dominant Z. Like in our previous examples, we compare the parental and double crossover phenotypes. We can determine the middle locus. Between phenotypes, recessive V, dominant W, and dominant Z, and recessive V, dominant W, recessive Z, we see that both progeny groups share a recessive V allele and a wild type W allele, but the alleles differ for gene Z. These attributes indicate that crossing over events occurred at loci V and W, but not at locus Z. Therefore, the middle locus is Z, and our gene order is V, Z, W. Now, to calculate the distance between genes V and Z, we add progeny numbers for phenotypes V, W, Z, all recessive, and all dominant for V, W, Z, because these are the progenies with single crossover events between V and Z. Then we add our double crossover progeny numbers because we know that crossover events occur between V and Z in these progenies as well. We then divide this total by the overall total and multiply that number by 100% to get a recombination frequency of 14.3% or 14.3 map units between genes V and Z. To calculate the distance between genes W and Z, we add progeny numbers for phenotypes dominant V, dominant W, recessive Z, and recessive V, recessive W, dominant Z, because these are the progenies for single crossover events between W and Z. Then we add our double crossover progeny numbers because we know that crossover events occur between W and Z in these progenies as well. We then divide this total by the overall total and multiply that number by 100% to get a recombination frequency of 8.4% or 8.4 MAP units.
between G and W and Z. The overall distance between G and V and W is the sum of the two distances we calculated, so they are 22.7 map units between V and W.